Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanegi with Addicted Fishing and if you guys are new to our channel be sure to go down here and subscribe and hit that little bell notification. Here at Addicted Fishing our goal is to educate, inspire and entertain you with fishing content from all over the world and educational pieces like we have today where we're going to go through and show you guys how to twist jigs for coho. We're going to show you the rod setup, the jigs that you want and the kind of water you want to look for to go find these salmon. So stay tuned, we're going to show you right now. What we're going to talk about primarily today in this tutorial is the kind of rod that you want set up, the line, the reel, the size jigs that you want. And then we're going to go through and kind of show you some of the different water that you're going to find coho in. The beauty of twitching for coho is the versatility of the twitching jig. It's the kind of presentation that you can use in any kind of water around the river, whether it be fast, slow, stagnant, structure, anything like that. We're basically bass fishing for these salmon, which makes it very intricate very entertaining because it's hands-on you're moving your presentation the entire time and a lot of times you're getting a very aggressive bite so really it's why it's one of my very favorite again the versatility and the the way these fish actually attack and bite these jigs so what i'm going to start with first is the kind of rod you want the key to a good twitching rod is length and action of the rod my favorite that i use is you don't have to use this exact rod but one that's the same action of this one is going to be key to be able to fish properly for these coho and actually have that good motion with jigging the the biggest part of the jigging technique is being able to have a lot of sensitivity in your rod so a fast action or a heavier action rod is going to be crucial what i have here in my hand is a guide select pro seven foot six eight to fifteen pound rod the shortness of that rod is pretty crucial because the more that you jig and have a longer rod, the farther your jig goes, which we'll go over here soon as far as, as, far as the kind of presentation that you want. You want that short rod so that you're not jigging too far each time and that you, that you have a lot of sensitivity in that rod because it's short and it's fast action. You want to be able to detect the bottom with these jigs so that you're down in front of those fish and you allow them to see that jig so that they can bite. So this is a seven foot six rod. I've seen a lot of different rods used for this. I used to use about an eight and a half foot rod. I would keep your rod selection under eight and a half feet. That way, again, you don't have too flimsy of a rod or too long of a rod that's gonna take away from the sensitivity of you and that twitching jig in the bottom. So the seven foot six guide select is my favorite. Eight to 15 pound. I've seen a lot of different kind of rods used, whether it's an ugly stick or, or any of the other kind of brands, but just make sure that line rating is about eight to 15 pounds fast action and a little bit heavier so when you're using and you're testing that rod out in the store you don't want to see a whole lot of flimsiness in that rod because that's going to help you again a lot to detect different styles of water you're going to be fishing whether it be structure whether it be fast ripples or anything like that what i have this reeled with on this one is the rtx 35s i like the 3000 series reels on any of my rod selections you can go with something a little bit smaller like the 2000 series reels like this um, inspira that i have on here but really I like the bigger reels because you get more line. Allows you to fight bigger fish and allows you to cast farther, of course. Uh, and again, you can fit more line on it. So these, re these reels are very versatile where you can switch them around, use them on different rods and for different adaptions, whether it be salmon, trout, bass, whatever you're gonna use them for. So that's why I like the 35 series reels. What I have on here is a 40 pound P-line braid. Any kind of braid is gonna work just fine for you. I like the high vis in certain situations so that I can see where my jig's going, so that I can see what part of the river I'm fishing in, especially in a low light situation, which these fish usually like, earlier in the mornings and later in the evenings. So I have the high vis with a 40 pound rating on here. I can go all the way down to 30, but I like to keep it in that heavier rating because you're fishing these on the bottom or near the bottom. So you don't wanna be losing your rigs super easy every time you snag up so that heavier line rating actually helps you a lot with detecting the bottom as more sensitivity and then when you do snag up you have that power with your fast action rod and your heavy line to actually get out of those snags and save your jigs so one imperative thing though if you're going to use this high vis line and it's not always imperative to have this bumper that i'm going to show you guys or this leader right here on the end but what i always do on especially on the high vis line or in a clear water situation or in a high pressure situation, if you're fishing around hatcheries or different areas like that, is to use a bumper. What I have here is a blood knot tied to my 40 pound braid down to about a 20 pound or a 15 pound fluorocarbon. 
That fluorocarbon's my favorite because it's very invisible to the fish. It matches any kind of watercolor that you're fishing. You don't need those greens or yellows or different colored line that's going to allow you to see it a little bit better depending on what style of river or how murky the water is that you're fishing. So 15 pound bumper. I usually go to about six to eight feet, especially if I'm going to be switching jigs a lot. That, that bumper is going to get shorter and shorter and shorter as you keep switching out your jigs. So I like to start with about six to eight feet on that all the way down to about a three quarter ounce switching jig here. What I have on mine right now is just a purple Mustad twitching jig. It's an addicted jig that we've come out with recently. We'll cover that in some of our next tutorials, so be sure to hit that little bell so that you guys can see the next few videos coming out showing you the different parts of this kind of fishing, uh, whether it be twitching jigs or, or style of water or actually how to fish it. So what I have is here is a three quarter ounce jig, and this is really kind of the key setup. This is, this is what I use every time I'm gonna go twitch. If I try to use a longer rod, it really makes it ineffective. So, the Guide Select Pro 35S reel with a 40 pound braid and that 15 to 20 pound bumper is how you guys want to be set up to go catch these fish. So now that we've gone over the different rod selection and everything, we're going to kind of go through and show you a little bit about where coho live. Because if you're not throwing these jigs in front of fish and where they're actually going to be, they're never going to work for you. What we have behind us is your typical coho spot. Coho, again, like I said before in the beginning of this video, are the bass of the salmon world. They like stagnant water, they like structure, they like basically everything. Again, the versatility of the twitching jig is what makes it so great and what makes it work so well. Being able to cast it and fish it in fast water and slow water, around structure, behind trees, in logs, you know, and every kind of nook and cranny that the river offers you, you can fish this twitching jig, which isn't so much the case with all the other different kind of methods that you use for salmon, whether it be spinners or bait or anything like that. When you want to look for coho, a lot of times the cool part about these fish is that they're very showy. And what I mean by showy is when they're there, they roll, they splash, they make noise. You see them, you, you see the activity in those pools and in that area where those fish are. You see them moving around. And so when you see that movement and you see those splashes and those fish rolling, that's where you want to go and target those fish. What we'll show you in this video and some of the B-roll is a lot of the different styles of water that I'm talking about, whether it be fast, slow, structure, so on and so forth. But what we have behind us here is a quick little idea of what a good coho spot might look like. What we have, we have a nice run coming down out of fast water. It starts to slow down and go into your typical riffle, basically almost like a steelhead riffle. But what you have here is you have a, th a, a thin channel down the center where it's shallow on the far side and we have a deep spot and a deep basically pocket on the left side. These fish will come up out of the fast water areas, which again, you can catch them there as well as they're moving through, but they'll always usually stage and pool up and school up in spots like this, where you have a deep eight to 10 foot pocket right off the side of a channel where those fish can come in, school up and just almost swim in a circle. So now what I have behind me guys is what I would call a faster moving run that I would want to twitch. What it, what it really indicates is, again, it's a wide run. It might be small, whatever kind of river that you're looking at, but a, a basically a, a flat, gravelly, or bouldery tail out that has quick moving water that these fish will stage in, in little pockets and behind different series of rocks or structure. So, what I'm gonna do in this case is it's gonna cause a little bit different effect of casting. You're gonna cast more at an angle down river, not so much up river because you don't have the depth to work with. And what we'll do is we'll go over a lot more of this in our tutorial on actually how to fish these jigs, which we'll put a link to down in the description here. So, what we have is again, you see, faster moving current, just probably a, you know double the speed of walking speed and a nice steady seam right down the center with a channel right here almost on the inside, on the, on the ed, ebb side of this run. So when fishing something like this, you're gonna be looking for different positions of these fish. They're not gonna be milling around in these back eddies like we talked about just a second ago or sitting behind a big log. They're gonna be spaced out almost more like trout or steelhead sitting in those runs. And what you're gonna find is that fish sit in these kind of runs a lot more when they're on the move. When they're not in position, when they're not holding in certain kinds of water or in, in at their destinations, whether it be at a hatchery or at their breeding ground somewhere on the river that you're fishing, they're gonna be spaced out and traveling through these areas which a twitching jig works great for because you can cover a lot of distance through the hole and cover a lot of range around in those spots that'll allow you to get in front of more fish and target and catch more coho. Okay, so now what we have next to us here is really the kind of structure that you want to look for. We speak structure, and when we do that, we this is really what we're talking about. This is where the coho fishing with the twitching jigs gets a lot of fun. It's when you have logs, submerged stumps, 
big giant boulders and different kinds of structure in the river that these fish tend to sit around. Again, they're the bass of the salmon world. For some reason, there's something about wood and coho that just go hand in hand. So when you find spots like this with big submerged trees that are in nice back eddies or side channels or anything that of that sort, that's where you really want to target. And a lot of times doing that, you'll be underhand flipping, you'll be casting, and you'll be working your jig through these areas quickly so to avoid the snags, but also to get the attention of those coho so that they'll come out like a little shark and react and bite. So finding those good bits of structure, finding those areas in the river that will host a school of coho such as that, where it gives them cover, it gives them some structure to sit around, it might even give them a current break of some sort, that's really where you're going to want to focus on using these twitching jigs because it really will up your catch rate in these kind of areas where a lot of other methods will, would never work to pull those fish out. So. Next thing we're gonna talk about in our next tutorial, which we'll put a link to down in the description, is the kind of jigs that you're gonna to wanna to use, style, color, weight, so on and so forth, for fishing for these fish. A lot of these different runs that we've showed you so far are gonna be used, are gonna be fished with using different kinds of jigs to be effective to fish those holes. Whether it be heavier, lighter, and then we'll go over the color sequence and a couple other different methods that you can use this twitching technique with, different kinds of jigs, different kind of flies that you can put on your line so on and so forth. So be sure again, if you guys like what you saw here today and you're new to addicted fishing, go down here and hit that subscribe button and be sure to turn that little bell notification on so that you guys can see more of our awesome content that we have coming out every single day and be entertained and be educated on how to go out and catch fish. So again, thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. You guys stay fishy. Be sure to hit that link in the description for the next video coming up. We'll see you guys out there.